Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom on this absolutely beautiful but quite chilly September day. This is going to be a very unusual video for me. Normally I like to talk about self-sufficiency, restoration work, vegetable growing my garden, practical things relating to my lifestyle here. But today I want to talk about something which, um, to my great surprise actually, has really resonated with people um, in the comments and emails I get every time I've mentioned it in previous videos. And that is being an introvert. So I've been an introvert all my life, uh, and I think perhaps a lot of you are too. Um, and maybe the kind of lifestyle that I've chosen to lead, living off the land, um, growing my own food on a small holding here in the west of Ireland, has a particular appeal to people who, like me, have an introverted nature. But for me at least, um, that hasn't always made life easy. And I want to talk from personal experience about what it means to be introverted, why it's challenging, uh, and how I've personally le learned to thrive and really, I feel, get the most out of life, not just in spite of being an introvert, but because of it. And I really hope that by sharing that, some of you may identify with the journey that I've been on and maybe even take something from it that benefits you. Those of you who aren't introverts, and I know there's many of you out there too, may well find a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about in this video completely mystifying and illogical. But I'm sure at the very least, you'll recognize the qualities that I talk about in someone that you know yourself in real life, because one thing's for sure, there's one heck of a lot of us out there. So firstly, what is an introvert? It's one of those questions that everyone thinks they know the answer, but in reality, I think there's a lot of confusion about it. Let's start by defining it according to the Oxford English Dictionary, that most reliable of dictionaries. So according to the Oxford English Dictionary, an introvert is a quiet person who is more interested in their own thoughts and feelings than in spending time with other people. Alternatively, they say it's a shy person. Then within psychology, they talk about um, introversion being to direct the mind and one's interests to things within the self. So none of those definitions are quite right in my book. And I can only talk about my own uh, definition and my own understanding of that word and what it means. I once met a very wise lady on my travels when I was um, in Canada for a year who told me that an introvert is someone who is drained by social interaction and recharges when alone. And an extrovert, conversely, is the opposite, someone who is energized and recharged um, by the presence of other people, particularly people they have things in common with. And that, I think, is the best definition I've ever heard, and it's what I tend to stick to myself. The only thing I would add is that I don't think it's a, an on-off switch. Um, I think most of us are somewhere between the two, extrovert and introvert, so I think it's a spectrum. Um, we probably tend to lean one way or the other. So what isn't an introvert? <laughs> well, contrary to one of those dictionary definitions, I don't think an introvert is someone who is necessarily shy. I think shyness is more to do with social fear or social phobia, which can be overcome. Whereas being an introvert is just the way you're made and probably isn't ever going to change. In a former life, I used to work um, for a company in which I had to host presentations and meetings which I didn't really find hard, to be honest, in the way I think a shy, social phobic person would have found hard. Um, but the talking and socializing afterwards, uh, I found that incredibly draining. And I couldn't wait to escape the office and be by myself again. And that, I think, is the classic hallmark of an introvert. It's not about being shy, it's about preferring your own company a lot of the time to the company of others. Another myth, perhaps the biggest actually, is that introverts are socially inept or awkward, that they lack social skills. Again, it's just not true. 
I think us introverts are really good at faking it until we make it in truth. And we're usually very empathetic and self-aware. And that might partly explain why being around people is so exhausting because introverts are constantly analyzing how other people are interpreting themselves. Uh, so we usually appear to enjoy being social, I think. And that's part of our downfall because it confuses the people around us. So introverts aren't necessarily shy and aren't necessarily bad at talking or socializing. It's more that we find it exhausting to do so and that being alone recharges us. That's the difference. And now for the big question. And yes, there's two kittens in the background in case you hadn't noticed them climbing over everything. My, my new mouse hunters, Griselda and Rumford in training. So how do you thrive at being an introvert? I haven't always been a happy soul, I have to admit it. Um, I think like most young people, I spent a good bit of my youth, and I'm well into my 30s now, believe me, trying to fit in with the world. And I don't just mean socially, um, but also in terms of career progression, relationships, doing all that normal stuff. Um, and the truth is, it never really worked for me. And that's just because it just wasn't what made me happy, simply put. Sure, aspects of it did, um, but the bigger picture, that, that life that is presented to us as normal that we should strive for, it didn't work for me, it didn't make me happy. And I think the most important thing in life is finding out what does make you happy, which is probably gonna be a bit different to the norm uh, if you're an introvert like me. In my case, it was escaping out here into the wilds, becoming self-sufficient, keeping animals, I love animals, growing my own food, being a kind of master of my own destiny. Uh, be that to succeed or fail, I've never really focused on that too much. It's about the life, not the destination at the end of it. And once I realized that, I just had to get to a point where I was brave enough to make it happen. Introverts excel at being alone. We close the door at the end of the day and come alive. And if you're an introvert yourself, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that deep sigh of relief that we're alone again. If you're an extrovert hearing that, you probably think that sounds mad, like it's some kind of pathological problem. <laughs> but it's just a fundamental difference, I think. And what that means is that we don't get lonely easily and we're really comfortable with solitude. Now that doesn't mean to say, and this is another misconception, that we don't like having people in our lives at all. Because I certainly do. But it does mean that we don't rely on others to recharge or even to support us during tough times. We tend to get that from within ourselves or perhaps from our animals. And it's important um, that I say, that's not because we're defective or broken in some way. We don't need fixing. It's just the way we are. And if you're like that too, I want to say to you, embrace it. Because it's kind of a superpower which allows you to do a lot of stuff like this kind of life, which many, many people out there could never do because they need people around them. Not only do introverts excel at being alone, but we don't rely on others for motivation or for entertainment or even for productivity. And if you know how to use it, that's a real gift. The next and probably the hardest part of thriving as an introvert is not being apologetic or ashamed of who you are. I spent so many years of my life uh, making up excuses as to why I couldn't attend that party or meet those new neighbors or colleagues at work. And the only thing that ever achieved was people thinking I just didn't like them, which was just not the case. In reality, I just found socializing exhausting and needed much more time alone than the average person. And I should, I should have just said that from the start. And that's what I do now. I'm unapologetic about that part of me because it's not something to be ashamed of. It's how I was made. You've got to own who you are. 
And one thing I've realized in recent years is uh, that if you can own who you are, then the people around you are much more likely to respect and accept you for that. You don't need to make excuses. You certainly don't need to apologize. You just need to be confident being yourself, whatever that is. Finally, don't listen to the people who want to fix you or change you or fit you into their expectations. Because in the long term, that's a recipe for misery. And this is your life. It's the only one you get. As long as you're not harming other occupants of this planet, your only objective should really be to be yourself and find as much happiness and joy as you can in doing that. And of course, that applies to more than just being an introvert. I think it's a good, uh, it's a good general principle for everyone to live by. So how do you thrive at being an introvert? Let's summarize it from my perspective. First of all, figure out what makes you happy. Don't expect that to happen quickly. It takes years and years of trying different things and exploring the world to really understand who and what you are. But whatever that might be, embrace your superpowers. Being alone isn't always a bad thing or something to be ashamed of. Tell the world who you are and own it. Don't be ashamed of being an introvert. And finally, don't let other people change you or hold you back in pursuing your version of happiness. I call this my meditation stone. It's in the middle of the forest, which is featured in a few of my other videos. And I come here whenever the solitude of Mossy Bottom just isn't quite solitary enough. And I know whenever I'm here, I won't be disturbed. It's just me, the trees and the birds and moss, of course. And that for me really is a magical feeling. Although I call it my meditation stone, I don't actually meditate. I just lie back and stare up at the treetops for as long as I need to. And if you're an introvert too, one of the best things that I think you can do is find yourself a meditation stone. Of course, it doesn't have to be a stone or a forest and you don't have to meditate. It's just a place in which you can be alone and feel deeply safe. Wow, meet Griselda, the mouse hunter. <laughs>